Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Quastini here with a discussion about Warhammer 3, Immortal Empires and 5 changes that Creative Assembly could make to really improve the campaign experience. They have stated outright in their Corn Ogres Greenskin DLC reveal that they're not going to focus anymore on Realms of Chaos, so for the sake of Immortal Empires, though some of these things, to be clear, could really benefit Realms of Chaos as well. And we're not necessarily going to be talking, I'm not necessarily going to be talking here about stuff that would be incredibly complicated to do. I'm going to be talking about some more simple things that modders can already do to some extent. Now, mind you, there is one major exception in this, but all the same. So, at number five, we have to talk about climate. Climate is a pretty big deal in a campaign because climate can really limit how far you can go in a campaign. There are mods that remove climate penalties or allow you to make climate favorable in your campaign, but given the way campaigns are played right now, where it's really the first 30, 40, 60 turns or so that are the meat of any campaign, waiting around 10 turns to make climate viable is not great, but at the same time, having every single climate in the game, as other mods do, being viable from the very beginning is not necessarily ideal as well. One of the things I've talked about previously is the notion that if you're confederating a legendary lord, you should gain their climate capabilities and potentially their faction effects as well, though that's a different discussion that would be more complicated, but certainly getting their climate would go a long way to adding campaign variability. And maybe some tool, maybe research, maybe research really that takes a while or something you can unlock for money to make a particular climate viable compared to where it is, be it unpleasant or uninhabitable. That way you would still be incentivized as a player to deal with favorable climate, pleasant climate, but you would have the ability of further expanding your empire as opposed to reaching a stage in your campaign, and this does happen in plenty of campaigns with plenty of legendary lords, as opposed to reaching that stage where you've dealt with your initial situation, you've dealt with all the climate that's suitable, there's nothing more for you to go for because it is going to be a significant cost, and you're just doing it for the sake of the grind. So that would be number five. Number four, confederations. The way the confederation system works right now is not particularly great. In fact, I would dare say, like, the entire system of diplomacy could use improvements. Now, don't get me wrong, the diplomacy we have in Warhammer 3 is probably the best in the entire series. It's the most logical, at the very least. You can understand how it works, but it could use further improvements, because the way right now it works with confederations is you need to be stronger than another faction, you need to ensure that faction doesn't take territory, and it's incentivizing cheese. Now, cheese will always be part of the game, that's fair enough, and I don't necessarily think Creative Assembly should worry too much about that unless it's really something that's so obvious that everyone would do it, but cheese will always be something that people do. However, I think like it would be better if the system of confederation was more sensical. One of the things I like about the dwarf rework, and in fact one of the main benefits of that rework, is you can guarantee confederations with other dwarven factions. Is it perfect? Not necessarily so, I feel it could be improved further, but at the same time, it is a better system because you guarantee that confederation as opposed to dealing with some diplomacy meter and faction strength meter, you know, getting to a certain stage where a faction is willing to confederate with you. So just in general, having the ability of guaranteeing confederation would be great. But the problem with the dwarf system is one, it takes quite a while to get to it. So you're not necessarily playing a campaign in a sense, oh, am I dealing with this threat and that threat? No, you're playing to get your grudges maxed out. And then once you get your grudges maxed out, you get to a stage where you're just going from one confederation to another to another. It's That's the problem. It's significantly better than something else we have, than the other options, but it does still have some issues. The alternative is what Karl Franz has, where he can guarantee confederation, but he has to spend a faction resource, there's a cooldown, there's some penalties. He can upgrade it for his own faction resource, but all the same, I think like, 
that is a better system. You do guarantee confederation, but you still have to wait for the cooldown for uh, the confederation ability for unification with Carl Franz. So yeah, confederations just improving that because confederations are fun, like collecting the legendary lords. I think one of the things that would help with this is vision with other factions as well. Like just let, let's say you want to go down the path of confederation. Well, first off, you should have a system that allows you to gain vision with the faction and maybe some kind of system as well where you can send aid as opposed to just money, right? Again, like Carl Franz has this, but maybe, you know, let's say I'm building an army, maybe I can give it to one of my allies, even if it te it's teleported around the map. Or something along those lines, right? You know, supporting a faction so they're doing better. I think I would like to have a system where you're incentivized to actually work together with your military allies to make them strong because you can confederate them as opposed to a system where it's about cheesing. And now for the record with, uh, record with Carl Franz with the Dwarves, you are already incentivizing that. It's a good step in that the right direction, but it could be better. For number three and number two, it is related to sieges. First off, let's talk about siege AI. So when you're attacking a settlement, if it has either walls or it's a minor settlement battle and it doesn't have walls, but it has a garrison and you're getting that layout, the problem in those kind of situations is when the AI is on the defensive, it doesn't matter what kind of force they have, they will split that force around the entire settlement, partly to prevent the cheesing that's been happening. But at the same time, the issue is you end up in this kind of situation where you just concentrate your force on a particular point and you know the AI is going to be split so you'll be able to overwhelm them locally and win. That's, by the way, not how a lot of sieges were fought, historically speaking. And hell, even in the Warhammer Fantasy universe, if we look at the written lore on this, the way sieges are, like think of Averheim and the End Times as a notable example, you don't have like the defenders running around all over the place. You have concentration of force. So I think like that would be better for the AI. And also when it's attacking, it concentrating its force as opposed to just splitting its forces apart would actually work better for the AI. Maybe if the AI could react to you doing that against it, when it's attacking, that could be better. A lot of people have this notion that, oh, it's the siege ladders, the the ladders that any, every unit can have in a siege that makes them bad. And if they only remove those, well, it's not really that case. There's so many other issues. I also think that the constant buildable barricades and towers, yes, if they get destroyed, they can't be rebuilt. But I just think that the entire system of barricades that happens throughout the battle is not great would be much better if it was just at the beginning of the battle but to be honest the way sieges are right now i don't even care about it if i'm attacking off if i'm defending it's just such a pointless uh, system but that's number three number two however is giving us an option to just disable them completely because ultimately regardless of what creative assembly does with sieges with the buildables with the ai with the ladders if you will Regardless of that, there's always going to be a fundamental issue with sieges. Sieges are the kind of battles that where a lot of types of units just are not that useful. And because we have so many provincial capitals and immortal empires, you end up in this kind of situation where uh, you end up in this kind of si uh, situation where you're just fighting one siege after another. And that pushes you as a player to build armies that aren't great for field battles, but they're great for sieges. That is not great. I have played with mods that disable sieges completely. And I have to tell you that it has been a much more interesting experience and actually a more challenging experience. Because remember what I said, you have all the advantages currently in a siege as an attacker. But if you have to fight field battle against an enemy, well, suddenly the enemy will act much better in that respect. Another thing related to this, besides disabling all sieges completely, SFO does it, other mods do it. Like, yes, there are things I don't like about SFO, to be certain. But I think those kind of options, the campaign customization that it does have, is a great idea. But there are mods that take it even further. Point is that removing siege, sieges in a campaign can add so much, uh, s such a greater campaign experience uh, to the game. 
On top of that, though, we got to talk about the auto resolve of sieges because every single settlement in the game has some kind of auto resolve benefit, which is ridiculous. The reason I say this is ridiculous is because the actual most challenging battles that you may find manually in a campaign are the field battles. The AI is better for it all as opposed to the siege battles. The problem is that those kind of battles, like if you're, say, you know, fight playing a campaign and say you're playing Boris Ursus as an example and you're fighting Archeon, fighting Archeon on the field might be the hardest thing you do in that campaign. Same for fighting Grimgor on the field as opposed to a siege. But because of the auto resolve benefit that settlements get, and the fact that obviously you can have an entire army in a settlement, you end up in a kind of situation where it's you're incentivized as a player to fight every minor settlement battle and every major settlement battle, but you can actually skip a lot of the field battles. It's also related to problems of auto resolve as well. So improving the auto resolve, especially with respect to how it treats armor, how it treats spells, nukes, etc that would be better. It's kind of ridiculous when you see someone with a doom stack of land ships looking at the defeat in an auto resolve because of how land ships are counted. It's just ridiculous. I understand it's a lot more complicated than making it out to be, but still just something to point out. Some mods do remove the AR benefits of settlements. And I, again, like it's one of the things that makes a campaign far more interesting than it could be otherwise. Like. It's uh, like some people tell me, oh, you just hate playing battles. No, I can enjoy playing a lot of battles if they're interesting. I've been playing Old World with plenty of campaign customization, and I have fought more battles with campaign customization in both Immortal Empires and Old World if I don't have to deal with freaking minor settlements. That's, that's where I stand on that. And they have certainly been a lot more interesting and fun than what you do have to deal in the base game. Uh, finally, and number one, campaign customization. Why do I mention it? Well, this especially is the case if you've played the game for a long time. Now, a lot of the people that watch my channel, based on the polling that I've done, they have played hundreds, if not thousands of hours in the game. But once you reach a certain point, you just get tired of starting a campaign over and over again. In particular, again, because the most challenging in a campaign is the early game. So this is where campaign customization comes in. Something like the mod configuration tool. I think the Old War Pharaoh was a step in the right direction in terms of that, but there is issues. Like in Total War Pharaoh, you can set yourself to give get more resources, campaign movement range, etc., but you just end up trivializing the campaign. That's the problem because AI can't keep up. But you do have the ability of customizing a significant number of things with mods right now. So this is what I'm talking about. Like you can customize so many things. Like, oh, you want to get research very quickly. You want to get construction costs, upkeep costs and all that. And you end up, and this actually ends up being far better in a campaign experience. You can say, oh, it's trivializing it. But any experienced player is going to be able to win a campaign as any legendary lord. That's not really it. And point of fact, I have found it far more challenging to play with MCT than um, to, to, to play with the configuration mod than without it because, well, the AI gets higher ranked lords, they produce more armies and all that. And actually, just like giving the AI higher ranked lords can be a benefit. Maybe we can talk about the AI. Maybe the AI is really the honorable mention in all of this and difficulty specifically. See, one of the problems that exists right now in the game, and one of the issues that's existed in Total War for a very long time, is related to AI difficulty. So they, the way the AI difficulty works is that when you start the campaign, dependent on the difficulty, campaign difficulty specifically, the AI gets a number of benefits. The problem that has existed for many years now, I would say, certainly since Shogun 2, is the fact that the AI gets those benefits from the very beginning. So you either end up in a situation where it's either too easy or it's too brutally hard initially. Like, I'm sure anyone who's played any number of hours in Warhammer 2 can attest to the idea that having, having to deal with entire silver-ranked armies at, say, turn 12 or 20 on Legendary was bullshit. Problem is that if you lower those values, then yeah, the early game can be good. This is one of the reasons like the early game is good in Warhammer, because it's less of that bullshit. The AI benefits have been reduced. They still exist. 
But the problem is later on, the AI just doesn't keep up with you. So some middle ground needs to exist with respect to that. I think, I do genuinely believe that one of the best things CA could do with this is add in scaling of AI benefits for a campaign. Like keep the ones we have right now, if you will, maybe even tone it down a bit. Cause yeah, the early game can be still a bit bullshit. But instead, as you progress further and further in the campaign, the AI gets more benefits. Now, maybe it shouldn't be tied to the number of turns. Maybe it should be tied to the amount of territory you hold or how many objectives you have. I mean, you could do it like say every 10 turns or so or every seven turns, the AI gets more and more benefits in terms of upkeep, growth, higher rank lords, more experience per turn and all that. But just have it a gradual increase of benefits as opposed to just having a set of benefits that the AI currently has and nothing whatsoever beyond that. That would create a better difficulty curve than the inverse difficulty curve that we currently have in the game. Because that's the problem. Like the early game is the hardest part. You overcome that, you win. It should be the opposite. It should be the early game is the easiest part. But as you play more and more, things get more difficult. They don't right now. They just simply don't. You overcome the AI and economy if you know what you're doing. I understand that this may not necessarily be the case for every player. I understand that Creative Assembly has to put on a lot of effort to consider, you know, newer players. But I think even on lower difficulties, having that difficult, the gradual difficulty increase would add a better, would create a better campaign experience. So that's an honorable mention. Would be, a, like, nothing I've mentioned over here is necessarily exceptional to do. It's just like most of the stuff, believe it or not, like, except CJI, right? Except like changing things in sieges or CJI. Outside of that, nothing would be exceptionally hard to do. Modders can already do most of it. And certainly Creative Assembly has a lot more tools than modders do have access to. That's all I had to say. Questine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.